The war on drugs has been an utter failure, uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize uh, our, uh, our marijuana laws. But I'm not somebody, uh, but I'm not somebody who believes in uh, legalization of marijuana. What I do believe is, is that we need to rethink how we are operating uh, in, in the drug wars, and I think that uh, currently uh, we are not doing a good job. Why do you support the decriminalization of marijuana? Why support the criminalization of marijuana is, is the better question. Uh, I, I mean, this is a substance that grows in a natural way, and some people use it for different reasons. In a free country, you ought to have the right to do that. And another good reason is the war on drugs is a total failure, and it's created a monster of, uh, of a problem for us, and we spend hundreds of billions of dollars. Prohibition is Good evening, absurd. Mr. President. My name is Mackenzie Allen. I'm a retired law enforcement officer and member of LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. The so-called war on drugs has been waged for 40 years at a cost of a trillion dollars and thousands of lives with nothing to show for it but increased supplies, cheaper drugs, and a dramatic increase in violence associated with the underworld drug market. Sir, do you think there will or should come a time for us to discuss the possibility of legalization, regulation, and control of all drugs, thereby doing away with a violent criminal market as well as a major source of funding for international terrorism? Thank you so much for your time, Mr. President. Well, I think this is a, uh, a entirely legitimate topic uh, for debate. Uh, I am not in favor of legalization. Uh, I am a strong believer that we have to think more about uh, drugs as a public health problem. Uh, when you think about uh, other damaging activities in our society, smoking, uh, drunk driving, uh, making sure you're wearing seat belts, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, typically, we've made huge strides over, over the last 20, 30 years uh, by changing people's attitudes. Uh, and uh, on drugs, I think that a lot of times uh, we have been so focused on arrests, incarceration, interdiction, that we don't spend as much time thinking about how do we shrink demand. Uh, and this is something that, uh, you know, within the White House, uh, we are looking at very Do you care about sick people using marijuana? I mean, have you come out for that? Uh, the answer is no. I say that there, there was one question that was voted on that, that ranked fairly high, uh, and that was whether legalizing marijuana would improve uh, the economy and job creation. And uh, uh, I don't know what this says about the online audience, but... <laughs> But I, I just want, uh, I don't want people to think that uh, this was a fairly popular question. We want to make sure that it was answered. Uh, the answer is no, I don't think that is a good strategy to grow our economy. So. Groups. We don't get our rights because we're gays or women or minorities. We get our rights from our creator as individuals. So every individual should be treated the same way. A system designed to protect individual liberty will have no punishments for any group and no, uh, no privileges. Today, I think inner city folks uh, and minorities are punished unfairly in the war on drugs. For instance, uh, blacks make up 14 percent of those who use drugs, yet 36 percent of those arrested are blacks, and it ends up that 63 percent of those who finally end up in prison are blacks. This has to change. We don't have to have more courts and more prisons. We need to repeal the whole war on drugs. It isn't working. We're spend, we have already spent over $400 billion since the early 70s, and it's a wasted money. Prohibition didn't work. Prohibition on drugs doesn't work. So we need to come to our senses, and absolutely, it's a disease. We don't treat alcoholics like this. This is a disease, and we should orient ourselves to this. That is one way you could have equal justice under the law. Thank you, Congressman. Okay, Stephen Baldwin, hi. You're against legalizing Enjoy. marijuana. Why? Well, it's a little bit ironic. I could see why Jimmy wanted to rush out of there so quickly. Uh, <laughs> here you're looking at an actor that has starred in two uh, very popular marijuana films, uh, Half Baked and Biodome. And, uh, you know, here I am uh, bringing a faith-based conservative perspective to this issue. And, you know, obviously, Joy, there's a lot of common sense that needs to be uh, included in this conversation. It's a very simple reality. 
Marijuana leads to doing worse things. That's just a fact. I don't care what anybody says, what the debate is. When you smoke marijuana at a young age, it'll usually lead to alcohol abuse and harder drugs. So right there, I mean, that's one reason why uh, it should not be legalized. We've heard that for years, that it's a gateway drug. What do you say to that, Congressman Paul? Well, I think that's silly. Probably the most addicted drug in the country and in the world is nicotine. And uh, nobody talks about nicotine being a gateway drug. So there's no sense to that. And besides, it's not nearly as addictive as alcohol. So if, if you're a consistent person, you think the government should be regulating personal behavior, you have to be for prohibition of alcohol. And when you look back and throughout history and what happened to that, that was a total disaster. It created the Al Capones. And right now today, there's so much violence today, not because people use drugs, but because they're illegal. That's why, you know, the people who benefit the most by all these laws, these are the drug cartels. They lobby to keep these laws in place because they can't exist without them. They're, you don't have the Al Capones now because you don't have prohibition of alcohol. Prohibition is what is bad. And this does not mean we endorse personal behavior that is is not beneficial it just means who regulates personal behavior and it shouldn't be the state it has there's no benefits to it it's just like uh, regulating church behavior okay. or religious behavior of any sort so I see no right. purpose in, in doing this okay Stephen we'll get back to you when we return okay more Baldwin versus Paul but I think this is a typical example of trying to fix a problem that we invite upon ourselves in economics uh, I, I I adhere to the position that once you want to do good in the economy uh, and with all the best motivations, you, we, we do things and we create new problems, then we have to go back. And if you get two new problems for every intervention, then you're constantly writing laws. Well, in social policy, I believe the same thing. Uh, it was trying to improve social policy uh, with uh, crack cocaine. There was no uh, malevolence, malevolence on this. It was, it, was, it was designed to help people, especially the minorities that were using crack cocaine over powder cocaine, and they thought this was terrible. And, uh, and it turned out that it backfired. It, it actually hurt minorities. It didn't help them. And here we're trying to correct this disparity. And uh, it, it just, to me, confirms the fact that uh, the government management, whether it's the economy or social policy, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, we're back. Stephen, let me ask you a question. Uh, Congressman Paul brought up the whole idea of medical marijuana. What, what is your response to that? People have glaucoma, they're nauseous from uh, anti-cancer drugs. What do you say to, to that? Well, again, you know, there, there is, you know, not a whole lot of research to back up the fact that there aren't alternatives even to that. There's lots of pain, pain relieving practices that people can study. So uh, I, I must say, though, to be honest with you, Joy, when in fact there are people for those reasons that do have success with it, then if prescribed under a controlled situation, then yes, obviously that makes a lot of sense. But back to, to Mr. Paul's statement about, you know, the addictive uh, aspects of smoking cigarettes. Obviously, if I smoke a cigarette, I'm not going to get in my vehicle and be impaired potentially to damage somebody else's life. If we legalize marijuana, there's no question that the number of deaths related to people being impaired under the influence of marijuana is going to increase. The question is, just to be able to tax it, is it worth it? That's the okay. question. Rob, what do you say to that? Well, I, I understand there's a few people who smoke marijuana already. And how many times have you seen somebody arrested for driving under the influence of marijuana? I mean, I've never even heard of it. Driving under the influence of alcohol, that is dangerous. But people shouldn't do that, and they should be responsible. But they, you can't get more people smoking marijuana. It's just that what, what is so bad is the war on marijuana, putting people in prison. They can be caught using drugs for the third time, never committing a violent act and putting them in prison for life and yet rapists and murderers can get out and if you think of all that expenses you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that get spent on this and people usually who get sent to prison for nonviolent drug use come out as violent criminals so it makes no sense at all to pursue this method because marijuana is not going to increase car accidents let me tell but you would, that I is would... not the case I would think that it's hard to detect if you're high on marijuana when you're pulled over by the police. There's no breathalyzer test. So how would we know what effect it has? Well, well there could, that, that, there, that's... There, go ahead, Ron. Go ahead, Mr. Paul. Go ahead, Ron. 
Well, that, that's a, that's a possi possibility, but even under today's circumstances, uh, nobody gets arrested for it. And uh, the alcohol is the real culprit and the real problem, and yet we have people in Washington, D.C.'s who drink a lot of alcohol, let me tell you, because of political reasons, they're scared to death to even to vote to legalize the growing of hemp. Hemp has nothing to do with smoking marijuana. And because of this obsession on the drug war, we can't grow hemp in this country. We send the hemp growing up to Canada.